Um, let's talk about some of the fundamental differences between Illustrator and Photoshop. First of all, let's examine a little bit of a shape. This is a triangle right here. Now the question is, how big is this triangle? Okay. Um, if we label this point of this triangle X, this one Y, and this one Z, or 7 or Z, um, we know that it has some dimension. Although we don't know what the actual dimension is because we don't know what the distance is between this point or between these points or this. This could be one inch um, or it could be one mile. We don't know. And that's how Illustrator is when you draw. When you draw a triangle in Illustrator, you're doing a shape with three anchor points that has three lines. That size can be infinite. All it has to know is where X is, where Y is, and where Z is. So when we're dealing with that, Illustrator makes it very easy because you only have to know those three points and it can be any dimension at all. However, in Photoshop, it's a little different. Photoshop doesn't require points. Rather, it requires two things. Let's write in here. Illustrator requires um, a location or plotting. So you can recognize, it's like a map. If I want to go to Idaho Falls, Idaho, I have to look for H1, and that will find it for me. Um, that's Illustrator. Photoshop, though, requires dimension and resolution. Dimension is, of course, the width and the height. Resolution is the number of pixels per inch, or in a given space, how many pixels are going to be in there. Let me show you an example. If we were going to do a, an Illustrator project, or a Photoshop project, I'm sorry, we have to have a dimension. And this has to be a set dimension. If this is measurement X, that has to have a dimension, and so let's say it's three inches. And this is dimension Y right here, and that has to have a dimension, we'll say that is three inches as well. So in all Photoshop documents, they have to have a dimension. The next thing they have to have is a resolution. In a given inch, and I'm going to make this a little smaller so we can uh, kind of see what we mean. We're going to just draw a line here, line here. So we've got, we'll say three inches here, three inches across. In this case, we need to have a dimension. We'll get you a little motion sick. Make sure you take your drama mean before you take this. Let's say this has four dots per inch which means it's going to have one, two, three, and four dots going across. It will also have four dots going down, like that. So total, within that inch of space, we have 16 dots. And each of these dots is assigned a color, or each of these little puzzle pieces is assigned a color. Um, that's how that deals with your resolution. So our dimensions are 3 by 3 inches, and our resolution is 4 dots per inch. Okay. Now that's really, really bad resolution. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But these are a couple things you have to remember. Now, every time you draw something in Illustrator, let's come over here. If you draw a shape there, it just simply asks this. What's my location for this point? What's my location for this point? what's my location for this point, and then is there a color in there or lines connecting it, okay? That's all it has to ask. If we were going to draw that same triangle in here, we would have to have, first of all, all of these. If it's going to draw a triangle, what it has to do is it has to go, it can't just draw those three points like Illustrator does, like we have over here. Instead, it has to ask each one of these points and what's there. Is there a color here? No. Is there a color here? No. No, no, no. And then it gets this one. Is there a color here? Yes. And so it fills that pixel with color. And goes, is there a color here? No, 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 no. Goes on. And goes to the next row. Is there a color here? In each of these puzzle pieces, it gets here. Oh, yes, there is. Okay. What about here? Yes. Is there one here? Yes. And so on. And it will continue to do that until it's built that triangle within that given space. Okay? And all of these have to be filled. And so instead of just asking three or four questions to build a shape like we would in Illustrator over here, 
In this case, it has to ask, well, let's see, 4, 16 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever 16 times 9 is, um, 9, 153 questions to do the same thing. Okay? Um, so with that as a background, there are a couple things you have to understand. Illustrator is better for drawing simple shapes and shapes that need to be flexible in size. Photoshop is better for drawing more complex objects. You're not drawing shapes. Rather, what you're doing is doing sort of additive drawing, sort of like when you draw as a kid. When you draw as a kid and you're going to shade something, you, you kind of start out lightly and then you, you make it a little bit darker like that and, and a little bit thicker and, and you kind of add and you sort of shade like that, right? Well, that's how Photoshop is. It allows us to create that shade and that variation um, and size and things like that that will allow us to get sort of these nice blends that we can't get if we were doing the same thing in Photoshop or in Illustrator. So Photoshop allows us to be able to do that and it's all based on bits or pixels. I'm going to zoom in really close on this and pretty soon you're going to start to see a bunch of little divisions, little grid. And you can see that each one of these pixels is a different color. It's assigning a certain amount of color within all of this area. Um, and by doing that, it allows us to get that nice, interesting gradation and blend that we couldn't get in Illustrator unless we were to draw little square by little square by little square right next to each other. Um, so that's sort of the advantage. Now, I want to hide this. I'm going to push Command-H, which will hide uh, that grid. And you can really see how those pixels start to change. Now, if we go back out, you'll see that the farther out you get, the clearer the image is. Okay? It's sort of like when I used to go as a, to dances as a kid. Um, you know, the farther away I was from a girl, the better looking I was. Um, in this case, the farther away this is, or the smaller the resolution, the smaller those little dots, the more clean your drawing is going to be. So we're going to close this, and we're going to go to a new file, and we'll get that started. And you'll be able to see now how to construct a file, and then we'll talk about the tools. Welcome back. Um, right now, the very first thing we're going to do is create a new Photoshop document. So you'll want to come down to your dock and click on Photoshop. Mine's already open, or at least already accessed. It's open here. So I'm going to create a new document. Command N. It's, or you can go to File, New. Either way. So it's like Illustrator. Command N. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it um, Wendell. I have a friend named Wendell. I won't tell him I called it that, but anyway. Um, now we've got a number of custom sizes here. There are a number of things that we can do. We can create a default Photoshop, US paper, which is 8.5 by 11, and different things like that. Normally, and film and video, which is important. Normally, however, with this, when we're starting to work in Photoshop, we're working with an end user product. We're not often, um, we're not often going to be uh, outputting it directly from this. We're working with something here that will be placed somewhere else and so we're going to have a set size. Very rarely will it be defined as an 8.5 by 11 or something like that. Now you see my width is eight is 15 inches wide. You can change it to pixels um, which you'll do if you're working with digital media. Um, centimeters if you're working with things that go international or millimeters. Points and picas, we won't worry about that. Inches is normally what you'll use. So we've got a width of 15 pixels, and we've got a height of 10. Our resolution currently is 150. Now, normally, for screen resolution, 72 dots per inch, or pixels per inch, is the resolution that you're going to be dealing with. Um, when you're starting to do things that are just for the web, or you're just going to be viewed on screen, like TV or computer or anything like that, your resolution is 72 dots per inch. And your color, well, we'll get that in a moment. For print media, your resolution is 300 dots per inch. And you turn off those signs. Um, now, I want you to notice the difference. Look over here at the image size. At 300 dots per inch, it's 38.6 megabytes. If we change that to 72 dots per inch, our size drops down to 2.22 megabytes. So all of those little pixels that it's going across are asking a lot of questions 
um, and it's going to take a lot of memory. And so the higher the resolution, the more questions it has to ask, and the greater the amount of memory. Okay? Now let's talk about color mode. We're going to talk about four different ones. Bitmap is either black or white. Um, and I want to explain it like this. Let's do this. Um, we'll hit OK. We're just going to leave it at bitmap for a moment and hit OK. Now, I'm going to come in here close on this with my paintbrush, or with a, a drawing tool. Um, let me make sure I've got a good color here. Okay. All right. Now I'm just hitting my tab key and you'll see that a little more in a moment. I'm doing this for illustration purposes. With bitmap, you have either black or white. That's it. There's no color. There's no in-between. Now that black can be substituted for blue or red in a lot of different applications later on, but in Photoshop it's just going to give you black or white. If I change my mode though to grayscale, like that, it's going to give me black or white or shades of gray. And you can see the difference right there. Okay, we've got all these different shades. So now each time it goes to a pixel here, it's saying, is there color here? No. Is there color here? Yes. What color is it? Well, in bitmap, there's only one choice. It's black. Okay. In grayscale, it's going to these and it's saying, is there a color here? Is there a color? Yes. Okay. What color of 200? Oops. In grayscale, so a bitmap. Let's do it this way. I want to get small enough so that you can see. Um, in bitmap, you have a choice. It's either black or white. Okay? Black or white. Okay? In grayscale, you have a choice of up to 256 colors of gray to be able to establish that color. And so those are your color choices there. Then you've got RGB, which stands for red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue, and we'll go to our image mode, RGB, and we'll see this again in a moment here. Um, when we go to this, RGB is 256 colors of red, 256 colors of green and 256 colors of blue. And between those three colors, it will give you a broad spectrum of colors and combinations. So this is going to take a lot more to figure out as far as thinking through this because we're going to come to that pixel. Here we come to that little square and we say, is there a color? Yep, it's black. Here, is there a color? Yeah, but it's one of these shades of 256. Here is there a color? There is, but now it's part 256, part of this is red, and part of it is a mixture of green, and part of it is a mixture of blue. So it has to ask an extra question. Then the final mode that it's going to give us is CMYK, which stands for cyan, which is a blue color, magenta, which is sort of a pink, yellow, and black. This is the print color spectrum. RGB is your digital color spectrum, CMYK is your print color spectrum. And so when you're dealing with this, their color, the color is going to increase, or the amount of memory is going to increase. Now the interesting thing about this is that the screen that we're looking at will only give us 256 versions, or 256, I'm sorry, the screen that we're looking at here is in red, green, and blue because that's the medium that it has to view it on. So it can't really show CMYK. So what it does is it gives us RGB and then it takes those combinations and it says, okay, what does this equal in CMYK? And it tries to give us that. Our colors aren't always going to be accurate here, but they're going to be reasonably close. This is a broader color spectrum right here than this is. All right, now. We'll come back in a minute, and we're going to see some more, um, and we're going to start talking about the individual tools in the, in the tool palette.